Today I thought we would make a dishcloth. This is me experimenting using an acrylic yarn. But as you know, dishcloths are generally done in a cotton yarn. So we're going to use this one. It's called Tam Perle. Let me see if I can get it where you can read it. Uh, Tam is not listed in there, but I promise you that's what it is. It's one of the few readily available coned cotton yarns that knits well on most knitting machines. And I already tried it. It does knit well on this one. Although, on all machines, cotton yarn is more finicky than acrylic or woolen yarn. One of the things different about it is it has virtually no stretch, give, and resilience. And it does tend to draw in after washing. So I've selected stitch size 9, even though a similarly thick yarn in acrylic or wool, I might knit it a 7. That's one of the first things you have to do. Also, I thought since it was already coned, I would attempt to knit from the cone with a fancy little routing through my tensioner, but it failed. I did not care for it. So we're back to having wound a ball and put it in the ball winder. What am I saying? In the yarn bowl. In the yarn bowl, which carries the yarn along with the carriage. On most machines, between its lack of resilience and the fact that we have to knit it loosely, cotton yarn does require a little more attention to weights, especially at the edges, than other yarns. However, I've already attempted it, and that is not true on this machine. You still do not need any weights. This is the Knit King AM3, which is the same as the Knitax, I believe, 4500. To get the pattern, we'll be using wheel number four, which is this one, and I've already installed it in the carriage. And to begin, I'm going to cast on, but I'm going to leave this fabric on to function as waste yarn. It's not essential. You can just cast on the naked needles, but I think it will make my first couple rows a little bit easier to have it in place, so why not leave it? I'm going to do the double E-wrap, loop on needle one, wrap under needle two, into the hook of needle one, and pull back, creating a stitch. Then under needles two and three, into the hook of two, and pull back. This will make a nice beginning edge and will allow us to start knitting the pattern right away without a fuss. So all the way across we will go like this, the double E-wrap. Cast on 36 stitches in that manner. So I'm finished casting them on. And we did that with the yarn fed through most of the way, but I didn't have it installed in the actual feeder on the carriage. So I did that just now. Now let's raise this a little bit so you can see. There's a good bit of slack in this yarn from me working. So I'm going to reach back here into the yarn bowl and pull it back through the tensioner. Very important not to have sloppiness in the yarn. And just while I was doing that, it popped out of the tensioner, which could happen, so back it must go. All right, everything's okay. It's feeding directly without slack here and here. Notice the faintly scalloped edges. That was what I was going for, wanting us not to need to do other finishing on the edge. They don't tend to roll very much, and in cotton yarn, once it's been washed and dried, I think there really won't be any roll. So this is the only edge treatment we'll need. To make it work, it depends on the tucking pattern to do this. And it's important that you stick with 36 stitches and the one, two, three pattern that I'm going to use using wheel number four. Others can do similar things, but the math is all different. You will understand what I'm talking about as we begin. I've discovered something about the needle retractor buttons 
since I made my first three videos on this that I need to share with you. They are meant to stay down when you pull them forward and down. See the little ridge that gets tucked in? So they will keep retracting needles as long as they are in that position. It's not stuck, it's a feature. Now is when they will stop retracting needles. So we must keep that in mind when we are working our pattern. From my cast on position, I've returned the needles to their normal working position. All right, let me try to even them up a little bit. Now outside of your area of vision, I'm setting the little inner dial to position one, and I'm going to press the patterning button so that it will select needles and knit across. The patterning is correct, but I had a small mishap over here with needle two where it split the yarn and didn't knit off properly. So I've corrected it manually. I think we're going to be okay and we will keep on going. Row two is just plain of our pattern. So is row three. Now I'm going to press the needle retractor button. It's a little bit out of your view. Make sure it's down and forward. I'm also going to make sure there is no slack in this left edge. There's a tendency for it to form, especially in cotton yarn and tuck stitch. So off across we go. Needles are back to their normal position and I'm moving to the little number two on the dial. Pressing the inner button and it across. Checking the patterning. Yes, it is correct. I wanted to make sure I flipped the needle retractor button out of work. I should have done it already, but because it was not the one that would have affected this row, I got by with it. So one more plain row. Another plain row. Needle retractor button down. Knit across and switch to position three on the inner dial. Press, knit across. Two plain rows. Down with the needle retractor button. Knit across. Back to position one and repeat everything. Press, knit, Release the needle retractor button, which again I forgot. Two plain rows. Depress the needle retractor button. Knit. Position two. Depress the inner button. One. Two plain rows. Two. Three. Press the needle retractor button. Continuing on, turning the inner dial to position three, depressing the patterning button, moving across, releasing the needle retractor button, two plain rows, depressing the needle retractor button. And we will continue on like that. Let's take note of all each patterning row this time. Position one. Depress the patterning button. Two plain rows after that. One, two. Depress the needle retractor button. Row number four. Release the needle retractor button. Rotate to position two. So we've already knitted four rows. This is row number five, begins position two. Depress the needle retractor button. No, I said that wrong. Depress the patterning button. Knit two rows. One, two. Depress the needle retractor button. Row 
104. All the needles are back into the, a straight line and rotate over to three. So we have now knitted eight rows. Depress the patterning button. Release the needle retractor button. One. Plain rows. Two. Three. Depress the needle retractor button. Four. So it's a 12 row repeat. And I'm going to keep doing that for a few inches till I run out of yellow yarn and then we'll look at it again. Now you can make yours as long as you want it. I would like mine approximately square and because I know that tuck tends to stretch in width a little bit after it's relaxed and off of the machine, I did this. I'm measuring length against width now. That's an easy way to do it. Just gently lift it up and hold it across the needles. And I made mine just slightly longer than it is wide because I'm pretty sure it's going to widen a little bit when I wash it and relax it. And you can see what we got. Yeah, they're sort of diamonds, but they're also sort of diagonal lines running along it. At this point, after my final row, there are still tucked stitches in other loop, in other words, loops on some needles. And I would prefer not to bind off tucked stitches, but to bind off plain stitches. So I'm going to knit one additional plain row. Like that. And now I've thought about this. You can bind off in the way that I intend to on the machine, but I think it's going to be easier to do it in my lap. So I'm going to release my main yarn and thread in some waste yarn and scrap off. That means take the work off of the machine on a few rows of waste yarn. That should be tw plenty. This yarn has knots and flaws in it because I've reused it a couple times. Doesn't matter, it's just a holder basically. And now that I'm out of my waist yarn, I'll just drop the work. Now I can easily do what I want to, which is back stitch into the existing stitches. And here's the thing to note about waist yarn. Good color contrast makes life much easier. The bind off that's going to be most similar to our cast on is the back stitch bind off. So called because we keep going backwards. Here I am coming up into a brand new stitch, trying to go into a yellow stitch and miss all of the turquoise. You need about three times the length of yarn that you have width of fabric to bind off. So you will be starting with the longest yarn tail. Backing up to select the stitch that was previously worked into. Tight. Remember that we think the tuck fabric is going to expand in width a little bit. And don't go between stitches. That is tempting, but you need to make sure it's a real stitch. See the sort of a V shape it makes? That's the clue. One more with you, then I'll do the rest off camera. Down into a previous stitch, up into a fresh stitch, the very last row, not the next to the last. And here's my bind off. There's my yarn tail. We'll deal with that in a minute. But I'm going to clip the closest row of waste yarn to the bind off on the end away from the yarn tail that goes to the waste yarn. Then if I go to the tail end, I may be able to pull it all out in one piece. No, hang on, got to release this end too. The very end was rather tightly caught in a stitch, but it may work now that I've freed it. Yeah, there we go. This is how it's supposed to work. 
voila and there is my bind off stretchy enough and I'll free the other end in the same manner and I'll show you how similar they are here you can see both sides of the finished cloth and as hoped the edges did stop rolling after washing.